Hi everyone, my name is Michelle Jackson and I am doing my book summary on The Healing of America by Mr. T.R. Reed. So, Mr. Reed had a personal experience that prompted him to go on a journey throughout our world to find some of the practices in healthcare systems in different nations, both industrialized as well as underdeveloped countries on our planet. So, with that being said, one of the first countries that he went to that I found really great practice and strengths that could be added to our system here in the United States was France. In France, each individual citizen has a card of life or carte vitale that has all health information dating back to 1998. So this is doctor's visits, prescriptions, plan of cares and I really think this is best practice for two reasons. Number one, it places onus and responsibility of health on the patient. The patient has this card and they're to take it to the doctor's office, to hospital um, admissions, and it has all of their health information on it. So they're responsible for keeping up with the card. And not only that, they have access to the information on the card so they can review the plan of cares and any preventative measures that the physician has recommended for them to stay healthy um, as well as maintain um, disease-free states. And if they have a chronic disease, they're able to follow the plan of care for that. So it places onus on the patient. Number two is that it has a potential to decrease the risk for violating HIPAA and violating patients' rights. In America right now, we have the tendency to send information electronically in our healthcare system, and sometimes it ends up at the wrong spot to the wrong person. Or right, when we're wanting to receive information from a physician's office related to a patient's care, we may not get it. So I also believe that the United States is lagging in the electronic healthcare arena because France has had this rolled out for years. And here we are still training physicians, care providers on electronic health record system. The second country is Germany. And I tell you, Germany has a very robust healthcare coverage plan. And I would like to say that I think that Germany is foundational in their healthcare systems because back in the 1880s, Chancellor Bismarck established his sickness insurance law, and this insurance law model has been utilized among many nations, including us here in the United States. So when our employer contributes to our health insurance premium, as well as us as employees contributing, this is based on Germany's health care insurance plan. So back to the robustness of their insurance. They cover citizens as well as guest workers. And not only do they cover them, they cover some pretty good things. They cover doctor's visits, chiropractic exams, and get this Spa treatments can be covered. And if your doctor thinks that your health care issue is related to stress or your migraines could be treated by vacation, he can write a prescription for your vacation and it would be covered by the health care insurance in Germany. That is phenomenal. Our neighbors in Canada have a model saying that anyone can get health care when he or she needs it without payment. They also boast on saying that no one in Canada will go bankrupt because of health care bills and no one will die because of they don't have access to treatment. And although this is great because Canada covers everyone, there are some weaknesses with Canada's health care plan. Number one, because it covers everyone and everyone seeks care, sometimes to get in for primary visits with the physician and just well exams, you can be on a waiting list that can sometimes take months to get in. But I will say they do a pretty good job on based on Mr. T.R. Reed's information of getting patients in if they are having an emergent situation being seen and also transferred to hospitals for treatment. I do want to say that there are some great data points that I found by reading this book that reaffirmed some personal convictions because the United States healthcare system 
is very resistant to change. And with that being said, there are over 40 million Americans that don't have health care insurance because they're too wealthy for Medicaid or too young for Medicare. So if we could tackle the top three indicators that drive health care, which are cost, coverage, and quality, we can help heal America. As nurse executives, I think it is our job to contribute to the healing of our healthcare system. And we can do this by coming up with a plan that covers every citizen, not just everything. We can set limits on what should be covered, such as basic diagnostic tests, pre-approved list of prescriptions. You guys, we have the power and authority to speak up for our citizens here in our country. And I think that some of the things we can continue to do is maintain excellency in our training of physicians, nurses, therapists, all healthcare workers. Our country does a great job doing that. And if we can start spending less on administrative costs, uh, costs such as fancy offices, top of the line furniture in our uh, facilities and put money more where it's needed, which is treating and preventing um, disease, then we would see our healthcare system improve. As the richest, most powerful and resourceful nation, I think we have what it takes to heal America. We can heal our healthcare system as nurse executives, we have an opportunity and a duty to help heal America. Thanks.